Hey everybody, welcome back to Medicine Deconstructed. I'm your host, Dr. Jay Rutland. I've received a lot of Instagram inquiries lately on updating an episode on YouTube that I had done previously called Interstitial Lung Disease. Well, here's that update. We're gonna talk about interstitial lung disease. We're gonna talk about therapies of interstitial lung disease and what to expect from a radiographic standpoint. Stay tuned for a little bit more. When thinking about interstitial lung disease, we have to understand the basics again. We always gotta talk about the lung. The lung is a bunch of pipes that lead to a bunch of balloons stacked on top of one another. The basic unit of function of the lung is called the secondary pulmonary lobule. The secondary pulmonary lobule is outlined by interlobular septa, which are a part of the interstitium. On these interlobular septa, are or travel within them are the lymph tissue where the white blood cells travel, the freeway for the white blood cells. In the center of that secondary pulmonary lobule is a bronchiole, the pipe that carries air to the alveoli. And then you also have a pulmonary artery, which is the vessel that carries blood to the alveoli. Because when they meet at that capillary membrane, that's when you're gonna have oxygen diffuse across that membrane to get into the bloodstream and also get onto the red blood cell for the red blood cell to carry that oxygen to the organs so the organs can receive it and give your body the energy it needs for you to be you. Interstitial lung disease is inflammation at any of those sites that I just explained. Your white blood cells are gonna infiltrate this space. Then gas exchange can't take place. Oxygen isn't gonna be able to diffuse through all of those white blood cells to get into the bloodstream Oxygen can't diffuse through the scarring that takes place. What we think actually happens in interstitial lung disease is that epithelial layer that you have, that alveolar epithelial layer, it gets aggravated and it breaks. Once it breaks, the white blood cells are recruited there to help heal. But what ends up happening? Just think about a cut on your hand. The two areas of the cut are gonna be able to touch one another and then the healing cells go in between that cut and mend that fence. In the alveoli, which is an empty space, when you have that break, if you don't catch that other side to try to heal it together, you're just gonna keep laying down that scar. It fills up that balloon. That balloon is no longer functional. That's now a fibrotic balloon or a type of interstitial lung disease. I tend to break them up into several categories. One category is called idiopathic interstitial pneumonias. There are about eight of them. Cryptogenic organizing pneumonia, respiratory bronchiolitis interstitial lung disease, disquimative interstitial pneumonia, pleural parenchymal fibroelastosis, idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, nonspecific interstitial pneumonia, acute interstitial pneumonia, and lymphocytic interstitial pneumonia. When you look at the autoimmune lung diseases, we're talking about rheumatoid arthritis associated interstitial lung disease, scleroderma lung, there's interstitial lung disease associated with Sjogren's syndrome, there's interstitial lung disease associated with mixed connective tissue disease as well. These are tough. So for the rheumatologists, that is autoimmune doctors, they need to understand that 15 to 30% of their patients that have rheumatoid arthritis may develop interstitial lung disease. 66% of patients with scleroderma do have evidence of interstitial lung disease on CT or on biopsy. When you look at another category, hypersensitivity pneumonitis, what is that? When we take that big breath of air in, we're essentially snatching our environment and we're bringing it on the inside of our body. It could be a bacteria, it could be a fungus, it can be any antigen. Those molecules can stimulate your airway epithelial cell and it starts secreting those cytokines. That leads to white blood cell recruitment. Sarcoidosis is an autoimmune lung disease as well. You're going to see lymph nodes that are going to be PET positive. In other words, they're gonna take up a lot of glucose and they're gonna light up on that PET scan of yours. And you might see some interstitial infiltrates on CT, which we're gonna go over in a moment. In the other diseases like LAM or like LCH, they have specific findings, not only on biopsy, but also on CT that are very characteristic of certain diseases. 
There's some easy examples of those, but for the most part, you just have to be thinking of interstitial lung disease when you're looking at a CAT scan. How are these patients going to present? Very, very simply, they're gonna be short of breath, they're gonna cough, or they may have a history of an autoimmune lung disease or an autoimmune systemic disease. So when you're talking to these patients, you wanna pay attention. Have you been to the hospital a bunch with pneumonia and not looking toxic? In other words, they never really have a fever. They have no toxic appearance. When you see them either as a primary care provider or as a pulmonologist and you check their pulmonary function test, that is how much air can actually be held in their lung. Do their lung volumes seem lower than usual? If they are, that can represent inflammation or fibrosis. At that period of time, probably want to get a CAT scan. More specifically, you want to get a high resolution chest CT. So recently I did an excellent video on high resolution chest CT and how to read your own high resolution chest CTs. If you want to see that video, go ahead and click right here and watch that video for more information on that. There's a cereal named after it. It's called honeycombs, right? So it looks like honeycomb. So we call it honeycombing of the lung. It's a sign of fibrosis. Make sure that you define where the cyst is located. If the cyst is high up, say, hey, yeah, this cyst is in the upper load. Now we're gonna move on to treatments and therapies. We're gonna talk about therapies of interstitial lung disease because these are important as there's new indications for some of these medications. When you're thinking about therapy, what are you going to do once you've established that there's no infection of any kind? You're gonna calm down the inflammatory response. So you're gonna use medications like prednisone. You're gonna use medications like mycophenolate mofetil. You have to understand that these medications calm down the inflammatory response. In mycophenolate mofetil's case, it's going to inhibit cell division. So cells that like to divide, not only your epithelial cells, which like to divide, but your T cells, which like to divide, are going to calm down when you're on mycophenolate mofetil or even another immunosuppressive drug called azathioprine. For fibrotic type of lung findings, you have really two options. In classic idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, you've got two options. You've got a drug called OFEB or nitinidib, and you've got a drug called Espriate or perfenidone. These drugs essentially inhibit some of the molecules that are responsible for recruiting the cells that lay down collagen. In progressive fibrotic interstitial lung disease, that is, any interstitial lung disease that's not idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis, that shows progression in any way, shape, or form, meaning you see scarring, or you see progression on CAT scan, or the patient's more short of breath, or the patient's lung volumes are more reduced, you can use OFEV or nitinidib. You can also use OFEV or nitinidib in idiopathic pulmonary fibrosis and also in scleroderma lung. Thanks for joining this episode of Medicine Deconstructed, where we discussed interstitial lung disease and progressive fibrotic interstitial lung disease. I wanted you guys to understand what the interstitium is. I also wanted you to understand what some of these radiographic images represent. I appreciate you guys being here today. Remember to come back next week where I'm gonna arm you with more information. Stay tuned for next week's episode.